In many ancient Native American cultures, the shaman priest is a central figure who mediates between earth and sky, binds together the society with knowledge of the worlds beyond earth, and leads transformative rituals that take group members into that other world. Ed Krupp, in many ways, is a shaman priest of our age, who brings literally millions of people into contact with the worlds beyond earth as director of Griffith Observatory. His work as an author of over 20 books and over 215 articles in archaeoastronomy has brought ancient astronomy to life and has provided many readers with a rare glimpse of how ancient people celebrated the sky and were united by its power. Ed himself began his journey here at Pomona College, where he began to mediate earth and sky as a resident of Pomona's Brackett Observatory, where he was a student here from 1962 to 1966. Ed no doubt experienced many transformative rituals of his own out in the wilds of Pomona Wash, <laughs> where small observatory people were, were visited by students and creatures at all hours, and where he began his studies of the sky. His graduate work at UCLA with George Abell enabled him to study the shapes of galaxy clusters and allowed him also to share his love of the sky with small audiences at UCLA's planetarium. Ed soon afterwards began his long and distinguished career as director of Griffith's Observatory in 1974. Under Ed's direction, Griffith Observatory has enabled more visitors than any other observatory on Earth to view the heavens through its telescopes. With its newly renovated campus, the observatory has become a contemporary temple of astronomy that showcases the latest technologies while also giving clear and reasoned voice to the astronomical knowledge of the past. As Ed transformed Griffith Observatory into its modern form, Ed also transformed how millions of Los Angeles residents and visitors viewed the universe. The ancient astronomers and shaman priests captivated their audiences with theatrical rituals and accounts of worlds beyond. Ed is no exception to this tradition and is well known for public lectures rich in humor and intellectual depth that combine scientific accuracy with great humanity. Through his lectures, writing, and the magnificent observatory, Ed Krupp reveals the rich common cultural legacy of the sky shared by all humankind. Mr. President, on behalf of the Board of Trustees and the faculty of Pomona College, it is my great honor to present to you Edward Krupp for the degree of Doctor of Science. Edwin Krupp, by the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Science in Pomona College, honoris causa. Thank you, Dr. Penprace. What a delight to be in the mix again. <laughs> I am honored and charmed to be here with all of you in a, a brief pause of maximum academic potential energy uh, before we all accelerate into the next kinetic enterprise. <laughs> I am beholden to President Oxtoby, the Board of Trustees, and the faculty for this honor, which provides me yet another opportunity to return to the scene of my undergraduate crimes. I believe it's my responsibility this morning to say something that is brief and relevant to this moment we share on the brink of all of your next enterprises. Confounding that expectation, except for the brevity, I am going to say something about Pomona College and astronomy. Astronomy may not seem to deliver a universally relevant theme, but it is why I first came to Pomona College, where the humanities and the sciences are inextricably linked. So astronomy does infiltrate this 118th Pomona College commencement. Now, astronomy was actually part of the earliest fabric of Pomona. Frank P. Brackett was one of the first three professors on the Pomona College faculty. He taught astronomy, and by 1908, he had built an on-campus observatory. So Pomona College, with cosmic perspective, always had its priorities right. <laughs> the observatory was subsequently named for Professor Brackett, and long after his tenure, I was privileged, as you heard, to live there. I was installed in the observatory by Dr. Bob Chambers, my advisor and Pomona College's astronomy professor. I am ever grateful to him. Several responsibilities accompanied residents at Brackett Observatory. The six-inch refracting telescope atop the historic stone building had to be operated for public viewing for students and for anyone else who happened to come by at what was then the edge of civilization in Claremont. There was no moment of epiphany for me but somehow I absorbed an essential concept. It's not about astronomy. It's about astronomy and people. 
that kind of experience and everything else, frankly, at Pomona College that humanizes knowledge and analysis cultivates an informed framework for action in every subsequent endeavor. Now, being the resident astronomical agent at Brackett Observatory, of course, added some glamour to my on-campus profile. Uh, but in fact, I was really a caretaker. Brackett Observatory had historic buildings and historic instruments and historic pictures and historic books and historic charts, and they had to be protected and maintained. This sounds very mundane and obvious and even unpromising, but it resonates with something else I learned at Pomona College. I learned it from Professor Vincent Lernahan in Western Civilization. Professor Lernahan was very quick, wickedly funny, and persuasively intent on intellectual commitment. He said a lot of things, and in one of the discussion sections, he said, maintenance is the key to civilization. <laughs> now, I hadn't thought much about maintenance before. And it didn't sound very interesting. But I had figured Professor Lernahan wouldn't say it if it weren't important. And that thought continued to haunt me after I graduated from Pomona. At Pomona, I had become actually a fan of civilization. And as new responsibilities emerged, taking care of things, reinforcing their foundations, enhancing their usefulness, and ensuring their survival for future users became fundamental priorities. Maintenance now seems like a lofty vocation to me. President Oxtoby's recent remarks about Pomona's Daring Minds campaign prompted me to recall one more thing I learned at Pomona College. President Oxtoby spotlighted the essential function of the college to provide the students with a wealth of life-shaping opportunities for educational depth, cultural exposure, creative inspiration, and practical experience. Now, I didn't exactly realize it at the time, but Pomona College is a vehicle for opportunity. When I first arrived at Pomona, I instead imagined it would deliver knowledge and insight, kind of like room service. That's a, it's a romantic, self-indulgent, and appealing notion, but in fact, Pomona College doesn't operate like room service. What Pomona really offers instead, and you know this, is one chance after another to do stuff, really remarkable stuff. And during my four years here, I saw many students and faculty too seizing the day because they could. Like my experience with Brackett Observatory, with Professor Lernahan, and with a whole catalog of other personal Pomona experiences, the mechanism sticks with you. It sets you up to do the next thing. And that has always been my definition of success, getting to do the next thing. So I was grateful to inhabit Professor Brackett's observatory. I did not realize it at the time, but the experience colored my sensibilities about life, the universe, and everything. I hope you have gotten to do stuff while you're here. I hope the place has enlarged your vision and enriched your principles. It's your life, your universe, your everything. You get to seize the day, so get on it. Thank you.